So the story surrounding Mugo Wairimo is perhaps just a poster child for something that may actually be a much bigger problem in this country. Who is real? Who is not? What is the difference between a doctor and a clinical officer? For many of us in our neighborhoods, we have all of these small little health centers which are extremely handy when you're going in to look uh, for some um, help with whatever health issues that you may have. But even as uh, Daniel Yumbia said yesterday, and he's the CEO of the Medical Practitioners and Dentists Board, he said there are 22 cases pending in court as we speak. So this is not about one individual, but there's clearly a problem. So how do you tell what's real and what's not? Who's real and what's not? The health institution that you are going to, or the health facility, is it licensed and is it legitimate to be able to serve you? Well, the best way to know what's fake and what's real is by talking about who a doctor is. All right. So um, let's start off with defining who a doctor is. And there goes my screen, uh, just going completely blank on me. Let me see if I can get it uh, once more time. Looks like it will not cooperate today. But um, yeah, so um, let's see if we can do this without this. So you have a doctor, you have a clinical officer, you have a nurse. How are you able to tell the difference? Well, for starters, a doctor goes through a six-year training. So let's start with doctors. They go through a six-year undergraduate training program, after which they are then required to go through a one-year intensive internship program under the supervision of a more experienced doctor. That one year includes three years, uh, three months, sorry, of uh, general surgery, three months of general medicine, three months of obstetrics and gynecology, as well as three months of pediatrics. After that, a report is then sent to the medical practitioner's board that then says person X has gone through the required internship, after which they are then licensed to practice. A doctor is usually a person who would be in charge of a level four hospital and above. Now, a clinical officer goes through a diploma course of about three years. And during that course, he is then, you know, going through what they say is mostly a little bit theoretical and less practical. But this uh, individual um, is then different from the doctor in many ways. However, a lot of the clinical officers are the ones who are the primary health care givers. They're the first line of intervention. It all started when there were too few doctors and this was sort of a stop gap measure. Now, many of them will do minor eye surgeries. A lot of them do circumcision in level three hospitals and below. So this is the difference between a doctor and a clinical officer. Now, when you walk into a facility, how do you know that this doctor or clinical officer is licensed, is legit, is able to serve you and has been vetted by the medical uh, practitioners and dentist board? Well, for starters, any doctor is supposed to have a name badge. That name badge has their name. However, it doesn't have any other details. If you want to verify, you then send an SMS to the number 20547. This then gives you the name of the doctor, their specialty, and it also gives you their registration number. So you'll be able to know if they're chiropractors or gynecologists or general practitioners. The same thing happens for clinical officers. <clears throat> Now, in the case of nurses, they already, with their certification, they're required to be uh, uh, refresh their registration every two years. They have what's like an ATM-sized card, which has their name, their registration number, there's a barcode as well as, of course, the expiry date and, you know, the period of their registration. That is a requirement by law. All of these are actually a part of Kenya's laws. CAP 253, that is the Medical Practitioners and Dentists Act of Kenya. So therefore, this is a legal requirement. And you, as a patient, have every right to ask for a name badge and to make sure that they are who they say they are. Now, that is for the practitioners. So what happens when you go to a health facility? First of all, how do you know that this health facility is one that is legit? Any health facility is supposed to have a number of key areas. It's supposed to have a waiting room. It is also supposed to have an observation or treatment room. It's supposed to have a waste disposal management system as prescribed under the Public Health Act. 
It's also supposed to be able to accord you, the, the patient, some privacy when you are in any of these rooms. Now, all of these things are again prescribed by law. So if you want to start a health facility, and by the way, anybody can start a health facility, a doctor, a nurse, a clinical officer, or laymen like you and I. And I will talk about the layman in just a moment. But what happens is you go to your county public health office and they come and inspect the premises and make sure they have all of these things I have told you. And after that, they do a report, which they then send to the medical practitioner's board, which then grants you the license if you are found to have met all of the requirements. A medical practitioner is supposed to have in that health facility some key basic items, a stethoscope, a thermometer, a blood pressure machine. These are all things that they must have at any basic health facility. You could be going to your specialist office to see your gynecologist. Now that is a different scenario. All they need is a private practice license. So how do you know that this health uh, facility is legitimate? It is also supposed to have the license to practice, which is given annually, prominently visible at any of these points that we have mentioned. Could be the waiting room, could be the observation room, could be the lab where you're having your tests run. This is supposed to be prominently visible and it's supposed to state the name of the facility and the level of the facility. So these are questions that you have a right to ask. Now, how do you know what are some of the signs? Well, first of all, Doctors, patients, nurses are all supposed to have uniforms. So this picture here, you know, accurately depicts what it's supposed to be. These are some of the things you can take a look at if it's not there. Another thing to make sure you note is the cleanliness of the place. You're supposed to make sure, well, you know, or at least check, you know, syringes lying around, cotton lying around that is used is actually a no-no. So what do you do in case you think this doctor is not a real doctor? or the health facility is not licensed. You can go to the medical practitioner's board. But in the case of Mugo Airimo and others, the reason you are seeing the DPP and the criminal justice system taking the front line is because if you are an imposter and you are fake, that means you no longer fall under the purview of the medical practitioner's board because you have fallen foul of cap 253 that states who a doctor is, where they're supposed to operate, and all of these uh, conditions that have been prescribed in the act. So it's actually considered not malpractice, it is actually a criminal offense. So you can either go to the medical practitioner's board and say, I think something is funny here. If that person or that health facility is not registered, then you can go to the police. This is how you can tell. Of course, there's a lot of questions about whether the medical board does its regular spot checks to make sure they weed out the fake from the real and how indeed some people fall through the cracks not once but twice of the criminal justice system. So there's questions to be asked of both sides as to making sure that you are safe and the health facility that you're going to is actually licensed to practice and qualified to do so. Let's take a break. We'll be right back tonight. <laughs> 